Representation theory is a branch of mathematics that studies abstract algebraic structures by representing their elements as linear transformations of vector spaces, and studies modules over these abstract algebraic structures. In essence, a representation makes an abstract algebraic object more concrete by describing its elements by matrices and the algebraic operations in terms of matrix addition and matrix multiplication. The algebraic objects amenable to such a description include groups, associative algebras and Lie algebras. The most prominent of these and historically the first is the representation theory of groups, in which elements of a group are represented by invertible matrices in such a way that the group operation is matrix multiplication. Representation theory is a useful method because it reduces problems in abstract algebra to problems in linear algebra, a subject that is well understood. Furthermore, the vector space on which a group for example, is represented can be infinite dimensional, and by allowing it to be, for instance, a Hilbert space, methods of analysis can be applied to the theory of groups. Representation theory is also important in physics because, for example, it describes how the symmetry group of a physical system affects the solutions of equations describing that system. Representation theory is pervasive across fields of mathematics, for two reasons. First, the applications of representation theory are diverse, in addition to its impact on algebra, representation theory illuminates and generalizes Fourier analysis via harmonic analysis is connected to geometry via invariant theory and the Erlangen program has an impact in number theory via automorphic forms and the Langlands program. Secondly, there are diverse approaches to representation theory. The same objects can be studied using methods from algebraic geometry, module theory, analytic number theory, differential geometry, operator theory, algebraic combinatorics, and topology. The success of representation theory has led to numerous generalizations. One of the most general is in category theory. The algebraic objects to which representation theory applies can be viewed as particular kinds of categories, and the representations as functors from the object category to the category of vector spaces. This description points to two obvious generalizations, first, the algebraic objects can be replaced by more general categories, second, the target category of vector spaces can be replaced by other well-understood categories. <laughs> <laughs> Definitions and concepts Let V be a vector space over a field F for instance, suppose V is Rn or Cn, the standard n-dimensional space of column vectors over the real or complex numbers respectively. In this case, the idea of representation theory is to do abstract algebra concretely by using n times n matrices of real or complex numbers. There are three main sorts of algebraic objects for which this can be done, groups, associative algebras and Lie algebras. The set of all invertible n times n matrices is a group under matrix multiplication and the representation theory of groups analyzes a group by describing representing its elements in terms of invertible matrices. Matrix addition and multiplication make the set of all n times n matrices into an associative algebra and hence there is a corresponding representation theory of associative algebras. If we replace matrix multiplication Mn by the matrix commutator Mn minus nanometer, then the n times n matrices become instead a Lie algebra, leading to a representation theory of Lie algebras. This generalizes to any field F and any vector space V over F, with linear maps replacing matrices and composition replacing matrix multiplication. There is a group GL v, F of automorphisms of V, an associative algebra ENDF v of all endomorphisms of V, and a corresponding Lie algebra GL v, F. Topic definition There are two ways to say what a representation is. The first uses the idea of an action, generalizing the way that matrices act on column vectors by matrix multiplication. A representation of a group G or associative or Lie algebra A on a vector space V is a map phi G times V V or phi A times V V display style phi colon G times V to V quad text or quad phi colon A times V to V with two properties. First, for any G in G or are in A, the map phi G V V V phi G V display style begin aligned phi G colon V and to V V and maps to phi G V end aligned is linear over F. Second, if we introduce the notation G V for phi display style phi G V, then for any G one G two in G and V in V one E V equals V 
Display style one quad E C D O T V equals V two G one G two V equals G one G two V Display style two quad G underscore one C D O T G underscore two C D O T V equals G underscore one G underscore two C D O T V where E is the identity element of G and G1 G2 is the product in G. The requirement for associative algebras is analogous, except that associative algebras do not always have an identity element, in which case equation 1 is ignored. Equation 2 is an abstract expression of the associativity of matrix multiplication. This doesn't hold for the matrix commutator and also there is no identity element for the commutator. Hence for Lie algebras, the only requirement is that for any x1, x2 in A and V in V 2 x 1 x 2 V minus x 2 x 1 V equals x 1 x 2 V Display style two feet quad x underscore one C D O T x underscore two C D O T V x underscore two C D O T x underscore one C D O T V equals x underscore one x underscore two C D O T V where x one x two is the Lie bracket, which generalizes the matrix commutator M N minus nanometer. The second way to define a representation focuses on the map phi sending G and G to a linear map phi G, v, v, which satisfies phi G 1 G 2 equals phi G 1 phi G 2 for all G 1 G Two element of G display style varphi G underscore one G underscore two equals varphi G underscore one circ varphi G underscore two quad text for all G underscore one G underscore two in G and similarly in the other cases. This approach is both more concise and more abstract. From this point of view. A representation of a group G on a vector space V is a group homomorphism phi G G L V F. A representation of an associative algebra A on a vector space V is an algebra homomorphism phi A E N D F V. A representation of a Lie algebra A on a vector space V is a Lie algebra homomorphism phi A G L V F. Topic terminology. The vector space V is called the representation space of phi and its dimension if finite is called the dimension of the representation sometimes degree, as in. It is also common practice to refer to V itself as the representation when the homomorphism phi is clear from the context, otherwise the notation v, phi can be used to denote a representation. When V is of finite dimension n, one can choose a basis for V to identify V with Fn and hence recover a matrix representation with entries in the field F. An effective or faithful representation is a representation v, phi, for which the homomorphism phi is injective. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Equivariant maps and isomorphisms. If v and w are vector spaces over f, equipped with representations phi and psi of a group G, then an equivariant map from v to w is a linear map alpha v w such that alpha. G V equals G alpha V display style alpha G C D O T V equals G C D O T alpha V for all G in G and V in V in terms of phi G G L V and psi G G L W. This means alpha phi G equals psi G Alpha display style alpha circ phi g equals psi g circ alpha for all g in g, i.e. the following diagram commutes 
Equivariant maps for representations of an associative or Lie algebra are defined similarly. If α is invertible, then it is said to be an isomorphism, in which case V and W or, more precisely, phi and psi are isomorphic representations, also phrased as equivalent representations. An equivariant map is often called an intertwining map of representations. Also, in the case of a group G, it is on occasion called a G map. Isomorphic representations are, for practical purposes, the same. They provide the same information about the group or algebra being represented. Representation theory therefore seeks to classify representations up to isomorphism. Topic: <laughs> Subrepresentations, quotients, and irreducible representations. If v psi is a representation of say a group G, and W is a linear subspace of V that is preserved by the action of G in the sense that G W element are W for all W in W, Sarah calls these W stable under G, then W is called a subrepresentation by defining phi G to be the restriction of psi G to W. W phi is a representation of G, and the inclusion of W into V is an equivariant map. The quotient space V W can also be made into a representation of G. If V has exactly two subrepresentations, namely the trivial subspace 0 and V itself, then the representation is said to be irreducible. If V has a proper non-trivial subrepresentation, the representation is said to be reducible. The definition of an irreducible representation implies Scher's lemma, an equivariant map alpha, VW between irreducible representations is either the zero map or an isomorphism, since its kernel and image are subrepresentations. In particular, when V equals W, this shows that the equivariant endomorphisms of V form an associative division algebra over the underlying field F. If F is algebraically closed, the only equivariant endomorphisms of an irreducible representation are the scalar multiples of the identity. Irreducible representations are the building blocks of representation theory. If a representation V is not irreducible, then it is built from a subrepresentation and a quotient that are both simpler. In some sense, for instance, if V is finite dimensional, then both the subrepresentation and the quotient have smaller dimension. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Direct sums and indecomposable representations. If V, phi and W, psi are representations of say a group G, then the direct sum of V and W is a representation in a canonical way via the equation G V W equals G V G W display style G C D O T V W equals G C D O T V G C D O T W. The direct sum of two representations carries no more information about the group G than the two representations do individually. If a representation is the direct sum of two proper non-trivial subrepresentations, it is said to be decomposable. Otherwise, it is said to be indecomposable. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Complete reducibility. In favorable circumstances, every finite dimensional representation is a direct sum of irreducible representations. Such representations are said to be semisimple. In this case, it suffices to understand only the irreducible representations. Examples where this complete reducibility phenomenon occur include finite and compact groups, and semi-simple Lie algebras. In cases where complete reducibility does not hold, one must understand how indecomposable representations can be built from irreducible representations as extensions of a quotient by a subrepresentation. Topic. Tensor products of representations Suppose phi 1 g g l v 1 display style phi underscore 1 g right arrow mathrm g l v underscore 1 and phi 2 g g l V two display style phi underscore two g right arrow mathrm g l v underscore two are representations of a group G display style G. Then we can form a representation phi 
one phi two display style phi underscore one o times phi underscore two of g acting on the tensor product vector space v one v two display style v underscore one o times v underscore two as follows phi one Phi two G equals Phi one G Phi two G Display style Phi underscore one O times Phi underscore two G equals Phi underscore one G O times Phi underscore two G If Phi one Display style Phi underscore one and Phi two display style phi underscore two are representations of a Lie algebra. Then the correct formula to use is phi one phi two x equals phi one x i plus i phi two x Display style phi underscore one o times phi underscore two x equals phi underscore one x o times i plus i o times phi underscore two x. In general, the tensor product of irreducible representations is not irreducible. The process of decomposing a tensor product as a direct sum of irreducible representations is known as Clesch-Gordon theory. In the case of the representation theory of the group SU two, or equivalently of its complexified Lie algebra S. Two C Display style Mathram SL two Mathbound C The decomposition is easy to work out. The irreducible representations are labeled by a parameter L Display style L that is a non negative integer or half integer. The representation then has dimension two L plus one Display style two L plus one Suppose we take the tensor product of the representation of two representations with labels L one display style L underscore one and L two display style L underscore two, where we assume L one L two display style L underscore one G E Q L underscore two. Then the tensor product decomposes as a direct sum of one copy of each representation with label L display style L where L display style L ranges from L 1 minus L 2 display style L underscore 1 L underscore 2 to L 1 plus L two display style L underscore one plus L underscore two in increments of one. If, for example, L one equals L two equals one display style L underscore one equals L underscore two equals one, then the values of L display style L that occur are 0, 1, and 2. Thus, the tensor product representation of dimension 3 times 3 equals 9. Display style 3 times 3 equals 9 decomposes as a direct sum of a one-dimensional representation L equals 0. Display style L equals 0. A three-dimensional representation L equals one. Display style L equals one, and a five-dimensional representation L equals two. Display style L equals two. Topic: Branches and topics. 
Representation theory is notable for the number of branches it has, and the diversity of the approaches to studying representations of groups and algebras. Although, all the theories have in common the basic concepts discussed already, they differ considerably in detail. The differences are at least threefold. Representation theory depends upon the type of algebraic object being represented. There are several different classes of groups, associative algebras and Lie algebras, and their representation theories all have an individual flavor. Representation theory depends upon the nature of the vector space on which the algebraic object is represented. The most important distinction is between finite dimensional representations and infinite dimensional ones. In the infinite dimensional case, additional structures are important e.g. whether or not the space is a Hilbert space, Banach space, etc. Additional algebraic structures can also be imposed in the finite dimensional case. Representation theory depends upon the type of field over which the vector space is defined. The most important case is the field of complex numbers. The other important cases are the field of real numbers, finite fields, and fields of p-adic numbers. Additional difficulties arise for fields of positive characteristic and for fields that are not algebraically closed. <laughs> <laughs> finite groups Group representations are a very important tool in the study of finite groups. They also arise in the applications of finite group theory to geometry and crystallography. Representations of finite groups exhibit many of the features of the general theory and point the way to other branches and topics in representation theory. Over a field of characteristic zero, the representation of a finite group G has a number of convenient properties. First, the representations of G are semi-simple completely reducible. This is a consequence of Mashka's theorem, which states that any subrepresentation V of a G representation W has a G invariant complement. One proof is to choose any projection π from W to V and replace it by its average π G defined by π G x equals 1 G G element of G G π G minus one x display style pi underscore g x equals frac one g sum underscore g in g g c d o t pi g caret minus one c d o t x pi g is equivariant and its kernel is the required complement. The finite dimensional g representations can be understood using character theory. The character of a representation phi g g l v is the class function chef g f defined by chi phi g equals t r phi g display style g underscore phi g equals mathrm t r phi g where t R display style mathrm tr is the trace. An irreducible representation of G is completely determined by its character. Mashka's theorem holds more generally for fields of positive characteristic p, such as the finite fields, as long as the prime p is coprime to the order of G. When p and G have a common factor, there are G representations that are not semisimple, which are studied in a subbranch called modular representation theory. Averaging techniques also show that if f is the real or complex numbers, then any G representation preserves an inner product. Display style Langle C D O T C D O T Wrangle on V in the sense that G V G W equals V W Display style Langle G C D O T V G C D O T W Wrangle equals Langle V W Wrangle for all G in G and V W in W hence any G representation is unitary. Unitary representations are automatically semisimple, since Mashka's result can be proven by taking the orthogonal complement of a subrepresentation. When studying representations of groups that are not finite, the unitary representations provide a good generalization of the real and complex representations of a finite group. Results such as Mashka's theorem and the unitary property that rely on averaging can be generalized to more general groups by replacing the average with an integral, provided that a suitable notion of integral can be defined. 
This can be done for compact topological groups including compact Lie groups, using Haar measure, and the resulting theory is known as abstract harmonic analysis. Over arbitrary fields, another class of finite groups that have a good representation theory are the finite groups of Lie type. Important examples are linear algebraic groups over finite fields. The representation theory of linear algebraic groups and Lie groups extends these examples to infinite dimensional groups, the latter being intimately related to Lie algebra representations. The importance of character theory for finite groups has an analog in the theory of weights for representations of Lie groups and Lie algebras. Representations of a finite group G are also linked directly to algebra representations via the group algebra F G, which is a vector space over F with the elements of G as a basis, equipped with the multiplication operation defined by the group operation, linearity, and the requirement that the group operation and scalar multiplication commute. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Modular representations. Modular representations of a finite group G are representations over a field whose characteristic is not coprime to G, so that Mashka's theorem no longer holds because G is not invertible in F and so one cannot divide by it. Nevertheless, Richard Brower extended much of character theory to modular representations, and this theory played an important role in early progress towards the classification of finite simple groups, especially for simple groups whose characterization was not amenable to purely group theoretic methods because their silo 2 subgroups were too small. As well as having applications to group theory, modular representations arise naturally in other branches of mathematics, such as algebraic geometry, coding theory, combinatorics, and number theory. Topic. Unitary representations A unitary representation of a group G is a linear representation phi of G on a real or usually complex Hilbert space V such that phi G is a unitary operator for every G element of G. Such representations have been widely applied in quantum mechanics since the 1920s, thanks in particular to the influence of Hermann Weyl, and this has inspired the development of the theory, most notably through the analysis of representations of the Poincare group by Eugene Wigner. One of the pioneers in constructing a general theory of unitary representations for any group G rather than just for particular groups useful in applications was George Mackey, and an extensive theory was developed by Harish Chandra and others in the 1950s and 1960s. A major goal is to describe the unitary dual. The space of irreducible unitary representations of G the theory is most well developed in the case that G is a locally compact Hausdorff topological group and the representations are strongly continuous. For G abelian, the unitary dual is just the space of characters, while for G compact, the Peter Weyl theorem shows that the irreducible unitary representations are finite dimensional and the unitary dual is discrete. For example, if G is the circle group S1, then the characters are given by integers, and the unitary dual is Z. For non compact G, the question of which representations are unitary is a subtle one. Although irreducible unitary representations must be admissible, as Harish Chandra modules and it is easy to detect which admissible representations have a non-degenerate invariant sesquilinear form, it is hard to determine when this form is positive definite. An effective description of the unitary dual, even for relatively well-behaved groups such as real reductive Lie groups discussed below, remains an important open problem in representation theory. It has been solved for many particular groups, such as SL R and the Lorentz group. Topic. Harmonic analysis The duality between the circle group S1 and the integers Z, or more generally, between a torus Tennessee and zinc is well known in analysis as the theory of Fourier series, and the Fourier transform similarly expresses the fact that the space of characters on a real vector space is the dual vector space. Thus unitary representation theory and harmonic analysis are intimately related, and abstract harmonic analysis exploits this relationship, by developing the analysis of functions on locally compact topological groups and related spaces. A major goal is to provide a general form of the Fourier transform and the Planchal theorem. This is done by constructing a measure on the unitary dual and an isomorphism between the regular representation of G on the space L2 G of square integrable functions on G and its representation on the space of L2 functions on the unitary dual. 
Pontjagan duality and the Peter Weyl theorem achieve this for abelian and compact G respectively. Another approach involves considering all unitary representations, not just the irreducible ones. These form a category, and Tanaka Crin duality provides a way to recover a compact group from its category of unitary representations. If the group is neither abelian nor compact, no general theory is known with an analogue of the Plancherel theorem or Fourier inversion, although Alexander Grothendieck extended tanaka crin duality to a relationship between linear algebraic groups and Tanakian categories. Harmonic analysis has also been extended from the analysis of functions on a group G to functions on homogeneous spaces for G. The theory is particularly well developed for symmetric spaces and provides a theory of automorphic forms discussed below. Topic. Lie groups A lie group is a group that is also a smooth manifold. Many classical groups of matrices over the real or complex numbers are lie groups. Many of the groups important in physics and chemistry are lie groups, and their representation theory is crucial to the application of group theory in those fields. The representation theory of lie groups can be developed first by considering the compact groups, to which results of compact representation theory apply. This theory can be extended to finite dimensional representations of semisimple Lie groups using Weyl's unitary trick. Each semisimple real Lie group G has a complexification, which is a complex Lie group GC, and this complex Lie group has a maximal compact subgroup K. The finite dimensional representations of G closely correspond to those of K. A general Lie group is a semidirect product of a solvable Lie group and a semisimple Lie group. The Levi decomposition. The classification of representations of solvable Lie groups is intractable in general, but often easy in practical cases. Representations of semidirect products can then be analyzed by means of general results called Mackey theory, which is a generalization of the methods used in Wigner's classification of representations of the Poincare group. Lie algebras A Lie algebra over a field F is a vector space over F equipped with a skew symmetric bilinear operation called the Lie bracket, which satisfies the Jacobi identity. Lie algebras arise in particular as tangent spaces to Lie groups at the identity element, leading to their interpretation as infinitesimal symmetries. An important approach to the representation theory of Lie groups is to study the corresponding representation theory of Lie algebras, but representations of Lie algebras also have an intrinsic interest. Lie algebras, like Lie groups, have a Levi decomposition into semisimple and solvable parts, with the representation theory of solvable Lie algebras being intractable in general. In contrast, the finite dimensional representations of semisimple Lie algebras are completely understood, after work of Ely Carton. A representation of a semisimple Lie algebra G is analyzed by choosing a Cartan subalgebra, which is essentially a generic maximal subalgebra H of G on which the Lie bracket is zero. Abelian. The representation of G can be decomposed into weight spaces that are eigenspaces for the action of H and the infinitesimal analog of characters. The structure of semisimple Lie algebras then reduces the analysis of representations to easily understood combinatorics of the possible weights that can occur. Topic. Infinite dimensional Lie algebras There are many classes of infinite dimensional Lie algebras whose representations have been studied. Among these, an important class are the KAC Moody algebras. They are named after Victor KAC and Robert Moody, who independently discovered them. These algebras form a generalization of finite dimensional semisimple Lie algebras, and share many of their combinatorial properties. This means that they have a class of representations that can be understood in the same way as representations of semisimple Lie algebras. Affine Lie algebras are a special case of KAC Moody algebras, which have particular importance in mathematics and theoretical physics, especially conformal field theory and the theory of exactly solvable models. KAC discovered an elegant proof of certain combinatorial identities, McDonald identities, which is based on the representation theory of affine KAC Moody algebras. Topic. Lie superalgebras Lie superalgebras are generalizations of Lie algebras in which the underlying vector space has a Z2 grading, and skew symmetry and Jacobi identity properties of the Lie bracket are modified by signs. 
Their representation theory is similar to the representation theory of Lie algebras. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Linear algebraic groups. Linear algebraic groups or more generally, affine group schemes are analogues in algebraic geometry of Lie groups, but over more general fields than just R or C in particular, over finite fields, they give rise to finite groups of Lie type. Although linear algebraic groups have a classification that is very similar to that of Lie groups, their representation theory is rather different and much less well understood and requires different techniques, since the Zariski topology is relatively weak, and techniques from analysis are no longer available. Invariant theory Invariant theory studies actions on algebraic varieties from the point of view of their effect on functions, which form representations of the group. Classically, the theory dealt with the question of explicit description of polynomial functions that do not change, or are invariant, under the transformations from a given linear group. The modern approach analyzes the decomposition of these representations into irreducibles. Invariant theory of infinite groups is inextricably linked with the development of linear algebra, especially the theories of quadratic forms and determinants. Another subject with strong mutual influence is projective geometry, where invariant theory can be used to organize the subject, and during the 1960s, new life was breathed into the subject by David Mumford in the form of his geometric invariant theory. The representation theory of semisimple Lie groups has its roots in invariant theory, and the strong links between representation theory and algebraic geometry have many parallels in differential geometry, beginning with Felix Klein's Erlangen program and Ely Carton's connections, which place groups and symmetry at the heart of geometry geometry. Modern developments link representation theory and invariant theory to areas as diverse as holonomy, differential operators and the theory of several complex variables. Automorphic forms and number theory Automorphic forms are a generalization of modular forms to more general analytic functions, perhaps of several complex variables, with similar transformation properties. The generalization involves replacing the modular group PSL2 and a chosen congruence subgroup by a semisimple Lie group G and a discrete subgroup γ, just as modular forms can be viewed as differential forms on a quotient of the upper half space H equals PSL2 R, so 2, automorphic forms can be viewed as differential forms or similar objects on γ G, K, where K is typically a maximal compact subgroup of G. Some care is required, however, as the quotient typically has singularities. The quotient of a semisimple Lie group by a compact subgroup is a symmetric space and so the theory of automorphic forms is intimately related to harmonic analysis on symmetric spaces. Before the development of the general theory, many important special cases were worked out in detail, including the Hilbert modular forms and Siegel modular forms. Important results in the theory include the Selberg trace formula and the realization by Robert Langlands that the Riemann Roch theorem could be applied to calculate the dimension of the space of automorphic forms. The subsequent notion of automorphic representation has proved of great technical value for dealing with the case that G is an algebraic group, treated as an adelic algebraic group. As a result, an entire philosophy, the Langlands program has developed around the relation between representation and number theoretic properties of automorphic forms. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Associative algebras. In one sense, associative algebra representations generalize both representations of groups and Lie algebras. A representation of a group induces a representation of a corresponding group ring or group algebra, while representations of a Lie algebra correspond bijectively to representations of its universal enveloping algebra. However, the representation theory of general associative algebras does not have all of the nice properties of the representation theory of groups and Lie algebras. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Module theory. When considering representations of an associative algebra, one can forget the underlying field, and simply regard the associative algebra as a ring, and its representations as modules. This approach is surprisingly fruitful. Many results in representation theory can be interpreted as special cases of results about modules over a ring. Topic: 
Hoff algebras and quantum groups Hoff algebras provide a way to improve the representation theory of associative algebras, while retaining the representation theory of groups and Lie algebras as special cases. In particular, the tensor product of two representations is a representation, as is the dual vector space. The Hoff algebras associated to groups have a commutative algebra structure, and so general Hoff algebras are known as quantum groups, although this term is often restricted to certain Hoff algebras arising as deformations of groups or their universal enveloping algebras. The representation theory of quantum groups has added surprising insights to the representation theory of Lie groups and Lie algebras, for instance through the crystal basis of Kashiwara. Generalizations Topic <laughs> Set theoretic representations A set theoretic representation also known as a group action or permutation representation of a group G on a set X is given by a function rho from G to XX the set of functions from X to X such that for all G1 G2 in G and all X in X rho 1 x equals x display style row 1 x equals x row g 1 g 2 x equals row g 1 row g 2 x Display style row g underscore one g underscore two x equals row g underscore one row g underscore two x. This condition and the axioms for a group imply that row g is a bijection or permutation for all g in g. Thus, we may equivalently define a permutation representation to be a group homomorphism from g to the symmetric group S x of x. Topic: Representations in other categories. Every group G can be viewed as a category with a single object. Morphisms in this category are just the elements of G given an arbitrary category C. A representation of G in C is a functor from G to C. Such a functor selects an object X in C and a group homomorphism from G to A U T X, the automorphism group of X. In the case where C is V E C T F, the category of vector spaces over a field F, this definition is equivalent to a linear representation. Likewise, a set theoretic representation is just a representation of G in the category of sets. For another example consider the category of topological spaces, top. Representations in top are homomorphisms from G to the homeomorphism group of a topological space X. Two types of representations closely related to linear representations are projective representations, in the category of projective spaces. These can be described as Linear representations up to scalar transformations. Affine representations, in the category of affine spaces. For example, the Euclidean group acts affinely upon Euclidean space. <laughs> <laughs> representations of categories Since groups are categories, one can also consider representation of other categories. The simplest generalization is to monoids, which are categories with one object. Groups are monoids for which every morphism is invertible. General monoids have representations in any category. In the category of sets, these are monoid actions, but monoid representations on vector spaces and other objects can be studied. More generally, one can relax the assumption that the category being represented has only one object. In full generality, this is simply the theory of functors between categories, and little can be said. One special case has had a significant impact on representation theory, namely the representation theory of quivers. A quiver is simply a directed graph with loops and multiple arrows allowed, but it can be made into a category and also an algebra by considering paths in the graph. Representations of such categories, algebras have illuminated several aspects of representation theory, for instance by allowing non-semisimple representation theory questions about a group to be reduced in some cases to semisimple representation theory questions about a quiver. See also Numerical analysis 
Philosophy of cusp forms Representation mathematics Representation theorem List of representation theory topics List of harmonic analysis topics Galois representation Glossary of representation theory Ito's theorem equals equals notes <laughs>